Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Better of You. Yep, it's Thursday again, and you know what that means. It's Tracy Woo. Belmonte here, and I'm here with my squad. First of all, we have Rihanna Dilly. Rihanna, are you ready for Christmas yet? I am so ready, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done a ding dong thing. I still have Christmas cards I have to send out. I am just, I think everyone's getting money this year. So, <laughs> but, I mean, that's easy. That's the simplest way. No, I'm, I'm so extra. I don't even want to tell you how ready I am. <laughs> Do you have a special um, Christmas cookie or uh, delight that you cook around this time of year? <laughs> yeah, actually, I have a, a bunch of cookies that I like to make. Um, Every year, the kids help me bake probably like, uh, I think like eight or nine different cookies and a couple of pies. So all right, we're going to so do all that, and then we give them to everybody. Oh, good. I'll be expecting a delivery then. And, <laughs> of course, joining us, and I don't know where you are. It's like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where in the world <laughs> is Deanna Lorraine? <laughs> right? So I'm still you? in Washington. Okay. I've, I've been watching ever since our walkaway march. I just haven't left. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I've been back. <laughs> I've been back. I'm in Washington. I'm actually at a place called, I don't know how to pronounce it, Hakaquan, Hakaquan, Virginia. Okay. And, uh, and the reason why I'm here is I'm staying with some good friends of mine, Andre Soriano and Ooh. his man. He is the Ooh. MAGA dress Ooh. designer. Remember the one who designed the yes. beautiful MAGA Trump dress? So sparkly. Yes, yes. I, I love so Andre. I love Andre. I, I had the uh, pleasure of making his acquaintance at the uh, Walk Away Gala. He looked yeah. fabulous there. Yes, yes. And I saw him and I said, I love you. And he goes, I love you. So <laughs> <laughs> right. No, he's Great. fabulous. He's the most fabulous. And they like, I feel like they're like my new gay parents because I was supposed to stay here for one day. <laughs> and now it's like, it's like my fourth night that I've been here. And I'm like, oh, you know really what I'll my welcome. Is he <laughs> like, I'll just stay here. Is he they're so cute. And stuff? Like, is he like, you know, like, is there oh a God. closet where you're just trying to close? I, I imagine. Imagine it's like you, there's a bar. Oh, yeah, there's dresses everywhere. There's mannequins everywhere. He was doing his dress designing today and asking for my opinion. You know, Ooh. it was just, and they're making Did you get to try dinners. stuff on? What? Did I'm asking him if he needs a model, on? I can certainly try it on. Mm -hmm. I would gladly be a guinea pig. Like, I mean, he wouldn't even have to pay me to try it on. I would no. do it for free. No, he's <laughs> he did. And then I'm here, I'm here with my other friend, Omar Navarro. Oh, we love Omar, too. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. We love Everybody. Omar, too. Hey, Yay. Omar. Hi. Omar, how are you? Hi. Omar, I got to ask you, you. Good. I had to ask you. Yeah. I, you know, you, 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 I mean, you put up the best fight, but obviously right? you're in a really dopey district that those constituents didn't want you because, I mean, come on. Uh, impeach yeah, I mean, I mean, there's no common sense right now, and especially in that district right now. Yeah. You know what just happened? I, I, oh my gosh. I saw that they're going to they're going to put a tax on texting. A I was thinking about that today. Texting. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I just tweeted that, and in, in the past hours, already gotten like 600 retweets. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. insane that they're doing that. It's outrageous. In California, they're doing all these crazy things, and it's going to push people out of the state. It's not going to push people staying in the state. I mean, right. people are just going to get all these outrageous taxes. They're just going to flock off. Well, and I'm here in Arizona, and, and I can, I can first person we're testify to that. We're covering illegal cell phones, right? Tell us a little bit more about how we're paying for illegal cell phones. Yeah, so so basically, part of this money that's going into it, and I, I twisted the narrative, of course. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you have to do a little bit of that. Because if you look at the money where it's really going to be allocated spent, it's saying, oh, it's the less fortunate. It's really not going to be for the less fortunate. It's going to be for the, the illegals that are incoming in our country. It's a payoff to them. So that way they can vote for the Democrats and continue uh, this enslavement mentality. Yes. And that way they just have a vo bigger voting block for themselves. So this is what it is. And that's what I'm calling it as. I'm calling it a, a, basically a tax to you get a handout to illegals to give them free cell phones. Yeah. This is amazing. You know, I read something today about California, and I'm glad that you're here because maybe you could shed some more light on this. I read that. Would it be called mansplaining if he is, though? He's a lot of mansplaining. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to mansplain. We love men on this show. So. Yeah, we love men. We yes. love mansplaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had 
read that um, of all the jury summonses that are sent out, 500,000 people that uh, go into the court system say, hey, I'm an illegal, I can't, sh I can't serve on jury duty. But correct me if I'm wrong, don't they use the voter rolls? Because that's what they use in New York mm -hmm. State. Yeah, they use jurors. the voter rolls for the... Uh for, they use the, exactly you're right about that. They use the voter rolls for for the uh, for for the people to serve on the juries. So and what does that tell us? I was knocking <laughs> doors. But, well, I was knocking doors. According to the motor ID law, uh, the motor voter law, uh, it automatically registers illegals to vote. Now, when it automatically registers illegals to vote, that means now they have the right to serve on jury. They have the rights that that a regular American would have. So you're taking the rights away from people that actually work hard to come into the country. And so it, it's not, it's, it's actually stepping on those people. So we have to kind of revert back and think about the, the, also, if you look at it, if those people vote and those people serve on juries are bringing federal law, meaning they won't even be able to get their citizenship uh, fixed at all because now they're committing a crime, a felony. So, I mean, that's a big deal. And I think that in itself, that's why the Democrats want to give them amnesty because if they give them amnesty, therefore now they own them as a voting block. Like I was saying earlier, you give them free cell phones, you own them. So they're finding different ways to get these people. And when I was knocking doors, I was telling them, look, if you vote, you're not going to be able to get your citizenship. You're not going to be able to get your paperwork. You, the, the only way for you to get your paperwork and it's not violating federal law, and by doing that, you are going against that. So you kind of have to educate people into doing that, that they're tricking them into breaking the law. That way they own them. This nice. is amazing. Drop. Yeah, this is absolutely amazing. So what does the future hold for you? Are you going to go back and try to oh, um, your attempt turn. to get into elected yeah. office again? or Please do. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different things I'm looking at right now. I mean, like, I'm here in D.C. too. Like, Will you run again, first of all? You have the cojones to run again. I'm, I'm going to run again. <laughs> but I, I don't know if I'm going to run against Maxine Waters again. I did declare I was, but if I am going to run against Maxine, I'm not going to run as a Republican. I'm running as a Democrat because uh, people in that district have been voting party lines for many years. And now if you have two Democrats running against each other, guess what happens? Now they're forced to think. They're forced to actually look into these people. They're forced into looking into the candidates. And that's a big thing. So I would like to people to know that Maxine Waters votes for abortions. I'm pro-life. Um, so I think that we need people to look into these things, look into the candidates, look at what they stand for. Of course, I'm not going to change my ideology. I am conservative. I, you know, I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in protecting free speech. I believe that we need to make sure that we are working with the president, not working against his interests. Mm -hmm. So regardless, if I switch parties, I'll still be the same person I've been in the past two years. But it's a way to challenge people into actually looking for the candidates rather than just looking party lines. And that's a big issue. He can be a Democrat and still be a Trump supporter. He'll so. be a dino. Yeah. You know? <laughs> a dino. A dino. <laughs> no, we need I to play the it. game right yeah. back at them, right? Like yeah. Jeff Flake or whatnot. You know, they're basically, they are liberals. But they're right. pretending and they're acting like they're Republican just to get the vote. So yeah. why not be a dino? Yeah, That's we a had bold that strategy, here. and I like the name. Yeah, I, I love it. We had that here with um, I was when I was working on the New York City mayor race. Bo Deedle, who was uh -huh. very very conservative, ran as a Democrat against De Blasio. Mm -hmm. De Blasio changed the laws at the last minute, so Bo Deedle was forced to run as an independent. And unfortunately, independents wow. just don't do traditionally well because, like Omar said, they. People in New York tend to vote down the line, and they've been voting Democrat forever. They, they still think that the Democrats today are like the JFK Democrats of my parents' generation, which we know obviously is not true. <laughs> yeah, they, they no longer hold the same ideology. I, I, I was talk, I was in New York about over a month ago, and I was talking to uh, some Democrats actually at the Trump uh, Hotel over there. And, I, you know, I was, I was very fascinated with what they were telling me and everything. It was very interesting. They didn't look like they were completely against the president. They seem pretty supportive and optimistic. But again, these were like blue dog Democrats. You know, you mm -hmm. don't have those anymore. And a lot of them have turned socialists, like Ocasio-Cortez, who backed out oh. of the debate with me in New York. <laughs> uh, she we backed out of the debate. debate with him in New York. She backed out. She just didn't show up. And so I had to debate uh, the mayor of uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, um, what was that? Yulon Cruz. 
Uh, so that was an interesting debate, which I beat her every single step of the way. Wow. She didn't make any sense. She was trying to uh, act like she knew about the American process when she's from Puerto Rico. She doesn't Wait, a know Democrat what. not making sense? Now you're crazy. <laughs> 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 but, wait, uh, Ocasio Cortez, we like build in a blog for her every week because she can provide some content <laughs> and comic relief. <laughs> but what was it that she said this week, Rihanna? Well, she didn't, oh, she didn't actually say it. It was, oh, oh no, she did. She did. <laughs> what is there something she doesn't say that doesn't uh, make any sense? I mean, she's, every she's day. rational. I mean, this yeah. is, we elected someone, and she wants to be on the, on the, on the banking and finance committee. Yeah. I think I saw an article about that. So um, I, it's only intended to make Maxine Waters look even better. Because Maxine <laughs> Waters is a complete moron. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. A, a block of cheese makes more sense. Than <laughs> <laughs> and Maxine looks like a queen next to her. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, people ask me all the time, you're from New York, how could people vote for her? I said, if you knew the district, you would know why. <laughs> Right. Because, I mean, they're really, the district is bright blue. So you really could put up a block of cheese, and a block of cheese would win against the Republican. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, but in, the, in her case, she, she beat a, a, known, a very well-known Democrat. And she Crazy. managed to skirt by and win. But, you know, I think that's what happens, though, too. Also, you all look at the demographics. The demographics no longer fit uh, the current incumbent that was in there. So, therefore, that was in Ocasio's favor. And she managed to win in that district. She didn't have to be the brightest. All she has to do is the best person to toss her name she in. She sure did <laughs> <laughs> But you know Thank what? Thank you for providing your knowledge. Yeah, I, I, one more, one more thing before I let you go, because while we have you here, let's let's like tap into your brain. This is something yeah. that's really bothering me because we don't have much time before twenty twenty. They'll be start. They'll start campaigning before you know it. There was so did, did much. You know they pushed the election to March in, in California, so oh. the election is happening in March and then in June. That's so bizarre. I mean, so it's right around the corner. Yeah, so that we can uh, just uh, not fix voter fraud, you know? I, honestly, yep. it bothers me that the GOP yeah. is so spineless and they do nothing. When voter fraud was rampant, you had these reports all over the place. And now in California, they do that crazy ballot harvesting where mm -hmm. I can go around and just collect people's ballots. Like, oh, that's, uh, that's something that they can't tamper with. It's ridiculous. Now, what do we do? Because we don't have much time. Well, I'll tell you in the, in the time that we have, we have to definitely crack down on ballot harvesting. That's a big factor. But also the motor voter law, where mm -hmm. it allows uh, illegals to be registered to vote. If we can crack down on these two things, it would make a drastic difference in an election, but also auditing uh, the county voter rolls too, making sure if there's four, more than four people registered under one address, that we're looking into these addresses. And sometimes you get 10 people, 20, 30, 150, 160 people registered in one address. Uh, that's a concern. So if there's red flags like that, we have to audit it and make sure that we're fixing the records and making sure that we're uh, uh, keeping the integrity in our elections. Oh, wow. Oh, you know, Omar, I'm so thankful for you, and I'm so thankful that you stopped by. And can you tell everybody <laughs> where to follow you on social media? Sure. Yeah, thanks for crashing our party. Um, yes. You guys can follow me at Real Omar Navarro. Uh, that's all my social media accounts. And OmarNavarro.com, just go to my website. Everything's on there, too. Thanks. All right, great. Thank awesome. you so much, yeah, Omar. You. We'll be hearing more from you in the future, definitely. Now, Deanna, yeah, when, when Andre's when Andre comes down from hiding, I think he's like finishing up a dress in a, in a time frame, in a quick time frame. So he's been slaving away on this beautiful awesome. dress. It's gorgeous. Like, Deanna, I have to ask, are you drinking red wine? Because we can see the um, glass. Oops, I didn't realize it was in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long, tedious day. So much work. She is just partying over there having wine with Omar and Andre. I, I'm super I, jealous. I, I, I'm getting a little bit I'm getting a little bit jealous. But after the news cycle, it made first of all, it felt like the news cycle threw up on me today. Like it's been like that the last oh my God. Of Literally. We're gonna get into it. So let's start with all the craziness about Michael Cohen. All right, because there's so much mm. there. Now, New York prosecutors turned the screws on Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to get to President Trump. Michael Cohen appeared in a Manhattan court Wednesday to face sentencing on nine charges and was sentenced to three years in prison for crimes including tax evasion, making hush money payments, and lying to Congress about past business dealings in Russia. Basically, he mixed up the dates, whatever. Now, the New York prosecutors also revealed that they reached a non-prosecution agreement for a non-crime with the National Enquirer's parent company, AMI, over Trump's 
hush payment to Playboy Bunny, Karen McDougal. So over and over again, we can see where the Mueller probe is taking us. There is no Russian collusion. We, we know this. There right. is nothing there. But what is it? Now I'll go to Rihanna first. What is it about this hush money payment that has gotten Mueller's attention? Um, I mean, we can speculate on that, but it seems like the obvious answer would be because there is no evidence of Russian collusion and there hasn't been any, I think he's just desperate to try and dig up something because of all the time and taxpayer money that's gone into this thing. He can't turn up empty handed. So he has to find something. So I think he's following a new rabbit trail um, and leaving those new breadcrumbs because Russia went belly up. It's just there's nothing there. There hasn't been, there hasn't been, even been a whisper of one. Every smoking gun has been a joke. Um, and there's, you know, thousands and thousands of documents in, that are now unredacted regarding Russia in this whole probe that show that there's nothing there. So now we've got to find something new, and here's the new thing. Yeah, and by the way, it, it still doesn't lead to Trump. They're trying to associate it with him directly, and he's not directly associated with it. No matter how they try and bend and twist it, it just doesn't work. Yeah, this, this, now remember the payment to Karen McDougal. This, first of all, President Trump is not the first powerful, rich man that ever paid a woman who was a stage five clinger to be quiet because and it's he not wanted, illegal. right, he wanted to protect his brand. But they, the, the, the way this, the, this, this, um, New York office is, is acting, this prosecutorial, uh, prosecutorial office is acting is that uh, it's an FEC violation. It's a campaign finance violation, which I don't see. I see them making a big stretch where they're saying, okay, if that the truth came out about Trump and Karen McDougal or Trump and Stormy Daniels, maybe people wouldn't have voted for him. It's like, hello, have you been around the last 40 years? Like, hello, Marla Maples. This man was not a faithful husband. This man was a ladies man. And I really don't believe that he was with Stormy Daniels. Uh, Karen McDougal, I can see, because she's more his type. But uh, Stormy Daniels uh -huh. is it, right? She is. She's model -esque. He doesn't like, like, the sloppy, you know, kind of a little bit out of shape, skinny, fat stripper look. He doesn't like that. He, he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, she is a, a horse face. I did actually <laughs> say it, and I don't usually use that term. But the first time I saw Stormy face. Daniels, and I, and I hate to be mean. I don't usually say this about women's appearances, but I did actually think she was a man at first. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really couldn't believe that, like, this is Stormy Daniels. This is what all the fuss is about. This is Stormy Daniels. That's not really Trump's type. Trump usually not does, like, model -esque kind of She's not his yes. type even in her prime. She yes. wasn't. I, you know, he, and remember, he's always he been about luxury so he and the fine beer goggles. Thing. Yeah, every right. woman he doesn't drink. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> no, I, yeah, you would need a lot of alcohol. You would need a lot of those red wine glasses. <laughs> you need a lot of red wine. <laughs> yeah, no, somebody with a lot of money doesn't pay for something like no, that. Definitely, <laughs> no, she really exactly is a hashtag right. horse face. But that, be that as it may, uh, the most important thing is these are not these are white collar crimes. They're processed crimes and perjury traps. You know, just like George Papadopoulos, which we can get into later. But these are these are things that, that this is all they've got. They're grasping at straws. And it's a disgrace, and it should be so obvious and apparent to everybody with eyes that these are uh, processed crimes, you know? And I had a virtual assistant, you know, seven years ago. If she committed a crime, if, you know, she was late on her taxes or something, how does that relate to me? How does it relate to me or my character? I don't know this about people. So what they're trying to do is tie every person from Trump's past into him or into his character or into the Russian collusion case. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's laughable at this point. This is what comedies are made about. Well, and it's his attorney. It's his attorney. How many people does this guy represent? Why right. are we even attempting to directly correlate him to Trump when he was the attorney and his own personal tax evasion has literally zero to do with POTUS? Like at any right. point, regardless of anything, and like I mean, it's said, embarrassing that they're they're grasping at straws this much, and it's been two yeah. years, and they've not found a lick of any Russian collusion with Trump with anything, right? So uh, honestly, I just can't wait to the day that this this ends because I'm sick and tired of wasting taxpayer dollars on this and wasting so much time and energy. Right. It just really bothers me that our Congress under Bill Clinton wrote a law to protect themselves when they sexually harassed women and men, maybe, in some cases. And they wrote this law to use our taxpayer funds to keep these women quiet. 
That's disgusting. That should be a violation. That law yeah. shouldn't exist. And we should get the name of every congressperson because I'm sorry, why did you pay to keep these women quiet? You paid to keep them quiet because you wanted it not to affect the outcome of an election. Now, to me, that screams campaign finance violation. Donald Trump protecting his brand that's on buildings all over the world and merchandise all over the world. That's not anything to do with the campaign. This man was an out and out ladies man throughout his whole entire life. If you didn't realize that Donald Trump wasn't a, a, was a ladies man, you've been living under a rock. Give me a break. Right. Yes, right. We've been we watching did. him on TV go we through it for years for to be publicly. Wait, wait, wait. What did, what did it talk about? Rihanna and Diana. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying we've been watching him do it publicly for years. I mean, he's been on reality TV for years. He was doing the Miss America pageants for years. It's no secret the lifestyle of a billionaire playboy. And frankly, we as voters don't give a flying any care in the world about it. We don't care. That's not why we voted for him. We don't care who signed an NDA and what kind of transactions he had behind closed doors before we voted for him. We're getting the results we wanted from this presidency. It's what we voted for. It's why we're going to vote again. And it's why it would not have uh, affected the outcome of the election regardless. And like you said, it's a complete, it's totally just uh, that same double standard we always see. And I'm pretty fed up with it. I think we all are. Yeah, go ahead. Plus, I just have to say this as a very, very, he's one of the wealthiest men in the world who's actually, you know, he's a, reasonably attractive, he's tall, et cetera. For the only, only two women have come forward in like 30 years, Stormy Daniels apparently, and this model. That's actually not that bad. Um, if anyone else were to come forward, you know, if, if there was anything else, there'd be a dozen or, you know, two dozen women, a train of women after him. Okay, then we can say a little bit more about his character. And, you know, one cheating is bad enough, but, if these are the only two women that supposedly say that he had sex with them uh, in 20 odd years, then I don't know. I kind of feel like if this was a track record, there'd be dozens of women coming out. Yeah, what about the photographer that buried the photo of Barack Obama uh, with uh, Louis Farrakhan? They buried that. I'm sure they paid for that. We just found yeah. out that Barack Obama offered Reverend Jeremiah Wright $150,000 just to go away and keep quiet. They all do it to protect their names. This is nothing. And I was talking to some people over the weekend that said that some girls have, they privately messaged them and say, hey, I have compromising pictures of you and I, or I have compromising pictures of you, or remember that time that you tried to whatever me, um, I will keep quiet if you pay me five grand or 10 grand. Women actually do this to politicians. I'm sure they, they do all the time. If I was a male politician, I would just have like a, a GoPro on my body because <laughs> seriously, what's it to say? Like we're in Trump Hotel a lot in DC. What's it to say that you know we said hi to, to this politician or that politician? What's to say that we can't blackmail them? That's a real story here. You have people like Stormy Daniels, people like Karen McDougal are trying to blackmail the the president who was a, a former uh which who was a private citizen at the time trying to blackmail a very wealthy powerful man and it probably goes on more often than than we know i'm sure it does so um i don't know where this goes from here I, I really don't but we do know that michael cohen over the next three months according to his lawyer look Ugh, Lanny Davis, um, he's going to be working um, for the next three months with Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen says he's going to spill out every dirty secret that he knows about Trump to give Mueller other avenues to go down, which this is- That's gross. what I'm worried about. Yeah, we, we don't, look, about. look, we don't, uh, in this country, we're not supposed to, this is like a banana republic, we're not supposed to chase crimes we're supposed to investigate the crime and see where it leads there's no crime here just like the ag in new york the new ag she's a disgusting disgrace too she's going to investigate all of the trump children all of the trump businesses to look for a crime how is this america i mean mm -hmm. rihanna what, what are your thoughts it's infuriating. We talked about it a little bit last week, and I think the week before, it's just brown shirt tactics. And it, it's not American. It is absolutely Banana Republic style. And it's nobody, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Mm -hmm. Because at what point, I mean, we've seen what's happening in China right now, where they're talking about doing a, a credit or essentially on your social media, um, you know, Big Brother Skynet style. Where does it stop? 
it, you know, we, we had that small victory with Kavanaugh where justice did prevail, but look at everything he had to go through just to get mm -hmm. to that point. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so sick of this whole thing. I'm sick of the Mueller thing. I'm sick of the way it's been handled. I'm still sick of it. I don't care who he paid off. There is nothing there. Cohen is an attorney. And of course he's trying to give him everything he's got on Trump because he's desperate because he's facing three years in club fed. Mm -hmm. And he's also an admitted liar. So like anything yes. he says, a good reputable lawyer. He's not a credible witness. Part, right? But that's what makes me so story. upset. Go ahead, that's what makes me that's what makes me so upset are the cowards, you know, like those who who are going to be a coward about it. And now if he gets off earlier because that he reveals a tell all book of Trump, doesn't he realize that by taking down Trump, you're taking down the whole country? You know, if we have Trump impeached over some dirty details, uh, you know, that didn't have to be revealed, then, wow, I mean, we like this is we're going to have a leftist as a as a president after him. You know, and like this is this is everything that we stand for as a country and our best shot right now turning that turn around the country is Trump. And so mm -hmm. when people give a little detail here, a little detail there, are they not seeing that they're only hurting themselves and the country as a result and everyone who voted for them? Yeah. You know, when 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 Clinton, this happened to Bill Clinton, you two were probably still wet behind the ears because you know, I remember. So, <laughs> no, but when when it when it did happen, it really springboarded back onto the Republicans at that time, because Bill Clinton was, despite all of his scandals and his foibles, he was a uh, well liked president and the country was doing real, real well at the time economically, which was because of the Republican Congress. But I, I digress. Uh, <laughs> so can we like we have to, you know, Speaking of, you brought up Kavanaugh. We have to talk about Christine Blasey Ford because she's back. <sighs> okay, yeah, yeah. So on Tuesday evening, <laughs> uh, earlier this week, she gave her first public statement since testifying against President Trump's Supreme Court pick, Brett Kavanaugh, in September. Uh, she actually appeared in a video presentation to give the Sports Illustrated Inspiration of the Year Award to former gymnast Rachel Den Hollander. And without saying his name, she at attacked Justice Kavanaugh again. <sighs> Rihanna, your thoughts? <laughs> it's like you just want the angry version of me on this show today. Like, I'm so We're going to go. I promise you the next segment is going to be fun for all of us. I promise. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't stand this chick. I mean, when we first started doing this show, she was pissing us all off. And, and she was like a point of contention. And I thought she, she was, you know, okay, she's dead and gone and just going to disappear. Nope. They resurrected her. And that was actually... She she was actually my thumbs down for this week with Sports Illustrated for dragging her up and putting a spotlight on her again. And there she goes in her weird, I need therapy myself, like childlike voice. Like, I'm so proud of you and you're galvanizing <laughs> women. And I'm like, who thought this was a good idea? Like, nobody believes her. She's full of BS. She's doing, once again, damage and disservice to real victims. Like... Uh, now that we're in the age where we can identify as any gender or color, you can be whatever you want. As Brenda a was gay toaster. As a gay toaster. <laughs> yeah. So you can even be a gay toaster. Apparently, you can also identify as an assault victim. And it's just like <laughs> really, one. really a disservice to people who have actually been through something to have this woman standing there giving a speech and being spotlighted in front of the nation again and taking another jab at her imaginary assault and then giving a trophy to a real assault victim who put a real criminal in jail. Oh my God. How did that woman even accept that trophy from this hag? I'm so, I'm done. I'm done <laughs> with her. I'm so done. Rihanna's done with the nasty segments. She wants to get on to the happy segments, which we will after I get Deanna's. Let's uh, get Deanna's uh, take on her. Let's get your thoughts. I mean, look, Deanna, I'm no hater, but it's kind of ironic that Sports Illustrated's biggest selling issue is when they exploit women. It's the bikini <laughs> ones. Right. right. And I'm not a hater because, like, I look at them and go, wow, I wish I could look like that. It gives me incentive to go work out and stay on my mm -hmm. keto and all that stuff. But I mean, it is kind of ironic that they would have, you know, Christine Blasey Ford give this type of award, but liberals do ruin everything. So I know. <laughs> what are your thoughts? I felt like when I heard that her, she was resurfacing from the dead, I felt like they needed, like, the Jaws music 
music to be playing in the background. I don't know the creepy child voice in the background. Like oh. it is. Oh, thank you. No, 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 no. Someone needs to do this like mashup. They have to. Right. Oh my god, the creepy child voice is so weird because she'll talk like normally, and then all of a sudden, creepy child voice. And then talk normal, and then oh shoot, I forgot my creepy child voice. I have to go back into it again. It's, it's like her screaming. lying voice. It yep. is. It's it's lying. But one of the Marxist tactics is you repeat a lie enough times, people will believe it. But True. I don't believe it. You don't believe it. We don't believe it because we're woke to those tactics. Unfortunately, the left are still sheeple, and they're still sheep enough, stupid enough to believe these kinds of things. And you know, but to me, again, it just it gives all the less credibility to real assault victims because now we're starting to we're starting to be doing something very dangerous where we're attaching uh, Christine Blasey Ford as like the spokeswoman for sexual assault. Uh, you know? And that like she's becoming the brand of sexual assault, which is a terrible thing. It gives it so much less credibility. And um, I don't know. I just want her to go away and disappear again, like go back under the rock she climbed out of. I want to audit a class. I can't imagine having a professor like that. And does she go into her multiple voices? Like, does she switch personalities throughout it's like her multiple lecture? Personality. It is. It's crazy. I, I mean, I picked up on three distinctive personality like dialects and 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 completely differences, uh, different attitudes in the way she carries herself. So I really do believe that she has some sort of dissociative illness and uh, some too. sort of weird coping mechanism. But yeah, it's like. Christine, uh, just don't go away mad. Don't go away with your baby. Just go away. Like, just we don't want away. to hear you. Just go, go away. away. We don't want, and like, for Christmas, all I want for Christmas is Christine Blasey Ford to stay in her two, uh, two doored house there. Like, just stay there and just don't. <laughs> so I promised you that the next segment would be a good one because O M G ness. So I'm <laughs> sitting in my car. I didn't even get to see it until later. Did you guys get to see the Trump Pelosi Schumer Oval Office ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that A little was, bit. Oh my gosh. I got to listen to it in the car and I could not come in from lunch. It was like, I don't care if I have another class. Shut up. Shut up. I'm, I'm <laughs> listening to this. The, kid, the kids will fend for themselves. You know? <laughs> but I, I'm listening to this in the car and I couldn't believe it. President Trump starts and he's doing his little jokes and whatever. And Pelosi and Schumer were just like, you know, hard right from the beginning. You knew that they just had their talking points that were going to call it the Trump shutdown the whole time. But I mean, not for nothing. That was the most unbelievable display of, 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 of strength that I have seen President Trump offer. And, and he's got the Democrats on tape now, the two main Democrats, saying that the border security that we have now is adequate and okay, which now they own every drug overdose. They own every uh, illegal that kills somebody. I mean, it's it's actually fantastic. It's a campaign uh, advertisement, if there ever uh, was one. So, well, Rihanna, right. did you get to see it? Yes, well, I saw it. It. it oh. what, what, what did you say, Rihanna or Deanna? Oh, I was going Rihanna first, but you know, you started oh, go, talking. Go, go, okay. she could go. You, you, you could. You sure? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> she, I think that red wine kicked in, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear every time. Well, I have to start with the names, like Ri Ri and D. I think we've got to do some nicknames. So Ri Ri. <laughs> <laughs> Mike what did you, Yeah, what did you think of the, um, the uh, SmackDown yesterday? Wow, it was so fun to watch because you could just tell that those two went in there thinking that they were just going to do their typical slimy political uh, slithering behind closed doors, and then they could come out and do the he said, she said, and oh, we said this, and he said that. And he was like, come on in, media. And it, they were just, amazing. Oh, it was it was epic. And everyone was like, yes. And, he, and I mean, Schumer just panicked. He melted. He was like, well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to debate this in public. Can we, can we please do this Shots in private? Just in. <laughs> feet down. He was about to cry. I mean, that picture of Trump just sitting up straight, like just directly uh, addressing him. And he's just, he can't even look up. He's looking at the ground just shriveled over. He doesn't even have his glasses on, which I don't even think he can see without those, but he didn't want to. He didn't want to be in the room. Nancy's over there like, 
her hearing's probably buzzing in and out. <laughs> like she's not even, or it was unreal. Um, because the, what was, what were they going to do? So he really, he cornered them because he was like, now you're going to be, oh, you said you want transparency, right? Nancy was just bragging about transparency when she got nominated for speaker. Right. This is what you wanted. Here we are. Put your money where your mouth is. And the result was exactly what we expected. And it was just delicious. Oh, it really was. And the, the, the best is Mike Pence is just sitting there in awe. Like, oh, <laughs> he was turned into part of the wallpaper. <laughs> he was like, ah. <laughs> I thought it was one of those life-size Michael Pence cutouts. Where it's like, like a cutout? Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't him. This is his campaign cutout. <laughs> now, I, I am, I'm all like, shut it down, Mr. President. Shut it down. Because look, 70% of the government that's essential gets funded. The 30% that we don't need anyway, that's just waste. And it's just studying, you know, shrimp running on treadmills. <laughs> well, like, they'll, they'll cut that, which I should anyway. So I'm all like, yeah, shut it down. But D and a D D D. Great again, D. Uh, what did yes. you think? What did you think of everything? This is why Trump. I just have the biggest crush on. I mean, he is just—he <laughs> is the man. He is my man. This is why I voted for him. As long as you I, stay away from Lindsey Graham, who's in favor of, of, of the show. Yeah, he's your boyfriend, right? right? Trump is mine. Lindsey's mine. <laughs> hey, I thought you guys would start fighting over Mitch McConnell after all those judges got uh, <laughs> You know, uh, I, I love his cojones. I mean, I've never liked cojones more than my Trump. Um, they're big, they're bold, they're beautiful, and they're spectacular. <laughs> Someone is going to isolate that piece of tape. I know <laughs> it. Please do it. We need it. Like <laughs> We need sponsors. We need Our sponsors it. are like dwindling by I the I was hour. just sitting here thinking the same thing, Tracy. I was like, we need this bit. Like, somebody <laughs> clip this. Please, this is perfect. <laughs> and that could be the answer for everything, you know? Like, any question, right. like, like, um... Uh, what are you hoping to get for Christmas? Cajones. Big, cajones. beautiful, you know? Like you're two like, fun cajones. <laughs> big, two, huge, oh, my big, only the best, the biggest. My Solid gold, cajones. trust me, the best ones. Nobody I, else has them bigger. I've lost right? control. I've lost control. <laughs> He's got lost balls control. bigger than Texas, and I love him because <laughs> this is why, like, we. this is unprecedented to have a president that, that opens the curtain and says, come on in. I want to literally show you what's behind the curtain. I'm going to show you these kinds of private conversations that the media would normally spin or not show at all. I'm going to show you how I talk and how I negotiate things and what I stand for. And then you're going to see what these people really stand for behind the curtain and without the spin. And what they stand for, as we already know, are is weak sauce. It's They want open borders. They literally think that the wall is basically sufficient. Uh, they don't believe that this is an invasion, even though these migrants are carrying their Nicaragua Honduras flags um, and being violent toward our brave border control patrol. These are people that want no respect for a country. They want to do harm for a country and our Americans. And he's trying so hard to protect us and them. And it was just to me a great showdown to see this, uh, this level of strength in anyone. I, I, I mean, even if no matter if you're a man or a woman, what side of the political aisle you're on, how could you not be turned on, but also feel safe by this protectiveness and strength. Kind of like the difference between a good, strong father who wants to protect you and wants the best for you versus a weak absentee father, right? That's mm -hmm. what basically Pelosi and Schumer, they're like weak absentee fathers that only show up uh, when they need to or when it's convenient, but they're not there and they don't really give a damn and they're not there to protect you. So yeah. I love it. Yeah, I, it was. A, it really was a, a, probably one of the top five most amazing uh, displays in his presidency so far. And arguably, yeah. immigration, the wall, is why he got elected. So we're all like, "Yeah, shut it down! Like, go for it, Mr. President." And there, you know, Trump isn't going to own it. They're going to own it. They branded it Trump shut down. Trump. It's no. It's it, it's going to it's going to fall squarely on their shoulders. Yeah. And because they got blood on their hands. They got more blood on their yeah. hands than O.J. Simpson. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I should have laughed about that, but that, I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> but the, the um, I, I mean, 
dudes and dudesses out there, you know, we, we voted for him to build the wall. We have tape of Schumer and Pelosi from a couple of years ago saying we need a wall. Yeah. So, I mean, it, there's going to be a wall and, and Mexico at some point is going to pay for it, but let's uh, stay tuned to see what happens next with this. This is great. I'm sure we're not done with the Chuck and Nancy show. Now, this is totally unrelated to, well, it is politics, but because Donald Trump did own the Miss Universe organization, um, the Miss Universe pageant is less than a week away. So we'll know the winner by the next, uh, the next better view. But um, the heavily favored contestant to win is from Spain. Um, and its name is Angela Ponce. And the reason why I say it is because this is a transgender woman um, who wants to win, and she's made it her mission to win, to stick it to Donald Trump, who was the owner of this organization at one point. And, and it has said, having a vagina doesn't make a woman. Even if many people don't want to see me as a woman, I clearly belong among them. Uh, excuse me, Angie. <laughs> okay. I mean, holy cow. Did you see this uh, person, <laughs> Rihanna, Riri? Yeah, I did. And, um, you know, I love drag queens. I love that whole culture. I, I don't care about the lifestyle choices of your LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Agreed. I don't care. Agreed. You know, um, but biologically speaking, once again, yes. Having a penis makes you male. <laughs> Having a vagina makes you female. And you might be really good at dressing up. You may be way better at makeup than me. In fact, this Angela, it, he or she, whichever it identifies as. Right. I the, don't the, know. It's infuriating how beautiful. Like, Gorgeous. So, right. Exactly. Gorgeous. It's right. So pretty. More women than we do sometimes. Gorgeous. <laughs> but I mean, we have, we genetically are different. And so when men who identify as women, women compete in women's sports or uh, women's um competitions you're taking away from women and uh, because i mean go do your own stuff go why can't you do a, a miss universe for transgender specifically um i'm sorry you have a dick you don't belong in the miss universe pattern, okay like Tracy, you said you were gonna stop pissing me off today i'm yeah. sorry I, well, I, don't, I, you know, I didn't think this was like it's just kind of a weird store it just it, just, it, it is, is weird and it's but it's becoming more and more and more common and it's just being rammed down our throats and it's yeah. like okay we get it you have a certain lifestyle and in this country you're yeah. free to do that but don't take away from your fellow <laughs> woman just because yes. you want to make a point you may feel like a woman because you put on makeup and dresses you're not you're not and no. maybe you're on the road to becoming one and that's your journey uh but it's you're just biologically different. And that why is that a bad thing? That's my question. If you were born a man and you like wearing dresses, fine. But why is it so bad that you were born a man that you can't go compete in a Miss Transgender Universe thing? Because that, to me, would be making huge strides for your movement rather than fighting against other women who would otherwise support you. Yeah, it's just like the the PC diversity that whole the, that whole leftist uh, ideology is now infiltrated into something I used to like to watch as a little girl. Like, what little girl doesn't like to watch beauty pageants and pretend to be in one? And now it's got to be sullied with all this PC crap and all this. Diversity. Right now, it has to be about gender and sexuality right. and identity and and the crisis behind need identity. This. Like sometimes just think, let things be for what they yeah. are. Now I know, Deanna, you're the relationship expert you're the expert on women and men and masculinity and femininity so i'm really interested to hear what you have to say on the topic well i wrote about this in my book there's a whole chapter in my book called gender transformation mm. the opposite of sex ah. and it's about how these this gender neutral transgender agenda will be the demise of our civilization if we keep pushing it as aggressively as we are and it's not a healthy thing. It's a very dangerous thing for many different reasons, which I outline in my book. You'll have to get it. But one mm -hmm. thing I'll say is that women, uh, you know, it's, if you want to be a transgender, okay. But it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be promoted and glorified as the new normal or as the norm. And nor, because one of the reasons why is because it, it makes our differences obsolete. 
there are differences between men and women. There are beautiful differences, and the differences allow us to need each other, right? And what women are, you know, feminists and leftists want to do is pretend that we don't have differences or turn us into this gender-neutral hodgepodge. But guess what? Then we won't actually need each other, and men and women should need each other. It's, it's important for society and for our families to actually exist, right? Another thing with this transgender issue is that uh, they're competing in these, um, these areas and these arenas where it should actually be only women, real women. So now they're competing with real women. And so the, the funny thing is the feminists that are promoting this are actually doing worse for women's rights than for them, right, than supporting them. Because now a lot of times these transgenders are winning these competitions um, where there's women there on the basics of, oh, it's the first transgender. Oh, it's so great. And they almost feel like they have to vote for them. We've already seen a Miss Universe win. Um, because they're transgender, we've seen a, a woman competing in a, in a woman's boxing league or, or Mai Tai, Muay Thai, not Mai Tai. Muay Thai. <laughs> Muay Thai. <laughs> Muay Thai. Thai. <laughs> Thai. <laughs> You're drinking. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of, maybe after this I'll have a Mai Tai. But yeah, we see, we see that there's, with, with, uh, who are born male, men who are born male are now competing in women's leagues and then winning. Uh, because they don't have they have a more aggressive makeup for instance, and I don't think that's fair at all I think that does way more to set back women's rights and equality than it does to promote it So there's just so many different reasons why this is wrong This is wrong on so many levels and if we want to create a, a Miss Universe contest just for transgenders to promote transgenderism We should do that and celebrate them But I mm -hmm. do think that real biological women should only be allowed to compete in the Miss Universe and Miss America yeah, to me, it's all just a money-making scheme because now everyone's yeah. going to tune in to this fla flailing organization since Donald Trump you know, sold right. it. It doesn't do well anymore. So now everyone's going to want to turn in to see, like, uh, I excuse my language here, but to see the freak because it is. It's a freak. Right. Exactly. Like every, everything is about sensationalism. You always have to one-up what, yeah. the, what the other person did before you. Just like we had the first uh, black president uh, in 2008, you know, we're, we're going to have the first um, a black transgender binary something or other you know it's gonna they, they, right. they're always trying to one up and it's all about money entertainment uh, winning yeah. and normalizing things that you know I like I said I I'm, I'm with you girls I've no problem with drag queens I've no problem the way you want to live your life that's fine I'm jealous of how beautiful some of some of these drag queens and transgender females are but um, you know this it's not normal it's not. It's in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders as gender identity disturbance or part of borderline personality disorder. So, you know, we're normalizing mental illness. And, yes. um, you know, I don't think that's a, a, a good luck on uh, society and for the children. So we have come to that wonderful, magical place where we give our thumbs up and our thumbs down for the week. So uh, I'll start over here, you know. I already kind of gave away my thumbs down. Um, it was for the new incoming uh, Attorney General of New York, Letitia James, because she vowed to look into the whole Trump family and look for crimes. Uh, I didn't believe that we did that in this country. I didn't think we just investigated people. This is extraordinarily scary, and I'm going to work with people in New York government to, to try to make sure this doesn't happen. But the problem is, New York has turned bright blue. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to have a fight on our hands with this. Um, the other thing that I have for you, the thumbs up, we were talking about the war on Christmas last week. Well, we're starting to win the war. We're starting to strike back so there was a Yay. in nebraska who banned everything christmas even banned the colors red and green but took it out especially on candy canes because he said the candy canes were a j for jesus give me a break well this principal is now on administrative leave they are trying to fire this principal in this nebraska school so yes there is some sanity Good. in the world so yeah we're, we're we're winning the war on christmas that's mine so re re what are yours <laughs> all right well i'm gonna go ahead and change my thumbs down since we already talked about sports illustrated and I'll go ahead and give my thumbs down for the week to Time Magazine for oh. their self-glorification of uh, highlighting Khashoggi and all these other journalists. 
And like I said, it's essentially like watching a cat lick itself. I mean, <laughs> none of us like you. None of us want anything to do with you. You're not our heroes. You're just printing your own stuff and calling yourself heroes. And just like you called Stalin and Hitler heroes and man of the year. I, I don't care about you and your people of the year is an indicator of what we don't want. None of us care about Khashoggi or any of you fake mainstream media journalists. We don't care. We don't care. You love yourself. So thumbs down to you. Good for and you. then, <laughs> and then my, uh, my thumbs up for the week is I'm going to give a shout out to my sister Ariel at Extension MV Salon in Scottsdale for doing my hair. Super beautiful. I just got it. Beautiful. It, it looks gorgeous. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. Well, and you know what? And this is like, I, I'm going to tell you a dirty little secret here. Uh -oh. I haven't, I didn't wash it or style it or anything today. I put it in a braid and went to the gym and then came back and, just, and you're just you know. flawlessly beautiful. <laughs> I hate See, it. I'm telling you, she works miracles. <laughs> like, I'm going to post before and after pictures because I was looking pretty wretched, and she fixed it. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> Lost my thumbs up. A little bit shallow, some little pretty... To get all uh, pretty. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to see your scope on that yet. I swear, I, I, because of Robert, I haven't streamed it yet. Oh, oh, good, because I saw that you were going to stream it. Um, yeah. I, I love, I love that stuff, um, and I love to catch everybody's scopes if I can, and everybody's YouTube channels when I can. And because I, I essentially work like two full time jobs, yeah, and I'm trying to write articles also, it's crazy. Um, so Deanna, give us yeah. your thumbs up and thumbs down. Well, thumbs down, I think, also was, you know, I, I'm concerned about Michael Cohen doing this tell-all book or revealing all these dirty details about Trump because, you know, none of us really care, but I worry that it's going to just be more damaging information to undermine our great president when all I want to do is see him shine and see him do his job beautifully um, and, and really see what he's capable of. And I hate this. I hate that more of these people are going down for processed crimes or perjury traps and then making plea bargains. So that would be my thumbs down. Uh, I hate this stuff, I just wanted to end. And my thumbs up would be, you know, we got to see, we, we were so uh, lucky this weekend at the American Priority Conference in Washington. Uh, uh, George Papadopoulos came basically straight from his 12 day sentence in prison to our American Priority Conference and we were the first ones to give him an interview. It was a private interview. There was only maybe 50 people in the room and, and it was so cool. And we, uh, the, the people from the American Priority bought the rights to interview him. So we had, he got to tell his full star story, start to finish, of how this all happened, how he got set up, and how he got sent to prison. And it was all just, again, another big hoax, one of those uh, Mueller shakedowns. And to wow. see the real story, and then also they shared the love story behind it. You know, they were just dating at the time that this happened. They were only four months into dating when all this has happened in the last two years. And there's no spin. We didn't have people interrupting them. We didn't have uh, CNN trying to ask them leading questions. We just got the full story. And then we got to hang out with them afterwards. And you know, they had just gotten married right before he went to jail and they only got time to do uh, just a jailhouse wedding, you know, or a courthouse, not jailhouse, sorry, a courthouse <laughs> wedding. <laughs> And so yeah. really cool. we got to we threw them a little private wedding reception that night, and it was Aww. it was just in one of the hotel suites, and it was beautiful. These two are really amazing patriots, and to see actually the, it brought the two of them closer together. Uh, to it was like a real love story of loyalty and true support and patriotism, and I know the truth is going to come to light eventually, and I'm I'm looking forward to that day. But it was a blessing to be able to get to know these people more personally that we keep hearing that is about. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw the a bit of the reception. Uh, somebody yeah. was scoping it. So yeah. it was pretty so cool. These are just normal people that, you know, they're victims of Mueller's horrible witch hunt. And God, I just can't wait till the truth comes to light. Yeah, I can't wait to see either, and I can't wait to see all of the different um, uh, uh, questions that were asked. I want to know, like, why he was taking pictures with Tom Arnold. That would be mine, but it's just... Yes, that's I do want to ask him that. Yeah, it's one of my self-indulgent questions that I have yes. to know the answer to. But <laughs> unfortunately, so George, if Papa, if you're out there listening, why did you take pictures with Tom Arnold? I want to know, and so does yes. everyone else. So <laughs> time has come. We have to say goodbye. This has been a really fun show. I hope you enjoyed it. I know last week I was a little intense. We had a lot of news throwing up on us last week as well, but we had a lot of fun with the news this week. So you can find these shows on politadiva.com and you can find me on Twitter at 
real Polita Diva. Sorry, I didn't uh, have my Marco Rubio moment, have some water. I needed <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna, where can people find you? All my social media is at underscore hublet. Excellent, excellent. And Diana? Yeah. Uh, it's Deanna Lorraine 7 on YouTube and Twitter. And then my website, DeannaLorraine.com. And my book is on Amazon. Yeah, I hope you both are appreciating. I'm making a concerted effort to fight my New Yorkism and say <laughs> Anna for both of your names. Yeah, I love it. Oh, I love it. Just do yeah. it. Don't fight your New Yorker. Yeah. Well, adorable. you know, you know, there's a, a show called The Walking Dead, and one of the characters is named Abraham. He is from where I am from in New York, and we have bad accents. And there's an episode where he goes, <laughs> "Who's Diana?" And that's exactly what I sound like when I say. <laughs> <laughs> Making a concerted effort not to do that because it is the worst accent in the world. I wish I could be British because if I was British, I could curse and it would sound bloody dignified. But I'm right. not. I'm from New York and I'm me. So <laughs> I also want to give a shout out to um, <laughs> Scott John Faraday for the website that he put together for us. It's really snazzy. Now we have links to uh, Rihanna's show. We have links to Deanna's shows. Uh, so you can um, catch them on uh, that website as well under the Better View tab. So we'll see you next week, everybody. All right. Bye, everyone. Good night. Bye. <laughs>